This edition of Mac Voices is supported by you, our viewers and listeners, through our new Patreon campaign. If you get value from Mac Voices, please consider helping support the show by visiting patreon.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this time I get to welcome back an old friend who I haven't talked to since the last time he published a book, and that's been, at least by my count, a little while, either that or I'm confused, Mr. David Sparks. David, how are you? Hi, Chuck. It's great to have you. I'm doing great. Yeah, it's great to have you. As you can see, I have a face for radio. I'm making a rare video appearance. (laughs) Well, I appreciate you compromising your values for me. (laughs) I, I appreciate your audience putting up with me. Oh no, no, no! It's it, it's it's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. Um, so this time around, you have a new field guide, which is sort of the yeah. the, the moniker you've given to your collection of of uh, well, they're not exactly printed works, so they're I'm going to call them organized works, iBooks, and that kind of thing. But yeah. this this time you did a field guide on the iPhone, which surprised me. Yeah, it's it's very broad. I I've been wanting this actually took a while to write this book. There was a lot to it because I wanted to cover the iPhone kind of soup to nuts. Whereas most of my field guides are very laser focused on one minor thing. This one was a, a broader book, and and I just felt like there's so many people out there that that have these iPhones in their pockets, and they could get so much more out of them if they just spent a little time getting better at them. Um, so that's why I made this book, and it's it's been great. Well, I love the idea, but to your point, you know, the, the iPhone has been out for a while. I think a lot of us have engaged in our own little patterns of usage, yeah. and and so hopefully you're you're finding a lot of value in that. But what you decided to try to force us out of our patterns and make more use of it? Well, I mean, there's just uh, you, you, the the problem is your patterns are probably covering ten percent of what's in there. And the um, and that's there's nothing I'm not saying that to be critical, but it's just that's the way we are as humans. We figure out, okay, this is how I do this one thing, and that's what I'm going to do with the phone. And then you never think about, well, could I do it better or faster? Could I automate it? Um, is there a whole category of things I could do with my phone that nobody's ever thought of before? Um, so I have the book covers kind of how to use the operating system and some really great tips on how to do that. But it also has, it's, it's 44 chapters. So it's got chapters on different categories of applications. And maybe you've never considered before with screencasts and explanations of why they're good and how you could use them to make your iPhone usage better. All right. So can you give me some examples of, of like what kind of categories that you think most people might not use? Well, you know, like one of them, I just heard from a, a reader email right before we started today, and she had read the book, and there was a chapter in there about reading, about how to read books, you know, about iBooks, Amazon, all the various book readers, and the best ways to put eBooks on your on your iPhone. And I had also added an app in there that allows you to play audio files. There's an app in there that is a text to speech engine, so you can grab the um, you can grab the text from maybe your Instapaper queue or somebody sends you a Word document, you can put it in there and you can listen to the document while you're driving down the road. It's a great way to catch up with large content. She didn't even realize that existed. And um, and so she was really happy that I pointed her to it. Okay. That, that, that's a good, fair example. So that you're not just, I mean, you may be aware, like you said, of, of audible, well, audible for audio books and all, but there are apps yeah. that will give you even more capabilities within a, a given discipline. Yeah, exactly. And and there's just so much there. I mean, like I said, the reason this book took so long, it ended up 450 pages, 65,000 words, over 50 screencasts. Because every time I turn over another rock, I'd find a whole new category of apps that I hadn't thought about. And and uh, really, I, part of the reason I wrote the book is to learn the stuff myself. And I feel like I'm way better at my iPhone just having gone through the process. Hmm. That's that's always we hear that so often from from yeah. developers and authors that they they scratch their own itch and in the process discover that there's a book to be written or an app to be developed or whatever. Yeah, and, and the nice thing about uh, this this iBooks platform is they make it really easy to update the book. I've already, as we record, uh, version one point one is already out. So I like after I released the book, drafts came out with a new version, and I had covered drafts in the book. So I updated the book for the latest version of drafts. 
I fixed a couple typos. There's always a few typos in version 1.0 for some reason. And um, and release 1.1. And so it, I can update it. My intention with these books, these field guides, is to update them for free for a couple years. And then probably have a second edition after that. But I fully intend after WWDC in a couple of weeks and in September when Apple releases the next version of iOS to update the book to include whatever tips and tricks I think are handy for the latest version of iOS. So it's kind of like a living book. And that's obviously one of the big advantages of electronic books um, mm -hmm. of, any, of any, no matter how they're done, whether they're done iBooks or PDFs or whatever, they can be revised very, very easily. Yeah. Yeah, and this one in particular because of the way it's structured with the categories. If like one of the chapters, it sounds silly, but people like this, is there's a whole chapter on calculators. And if you're an accountant or an engineer, I have specific recommendations for different categories of calculators because the iPhone's a great calculator, but you don't the, the app that Apple gives you isn't really that great. There's some really good ones. So I like point out some of my favorites and do screencasts to show you how to use them. Hmm. Okay. But anyway, I, my point was, if one of those calculators goes out of development or suddenly gets buggy, I can replace it with one that I think would be a more appropriate app. So it, it's it's fun. I, I really am enjoying uh, the process of this book. I don't want to do too much inside baseball, but I have to ask, with the changes that have happened to iBooks and all, did that how did that def affect the development of the book? Um, it really didn't because the book was largely done when those changes came into place. The um, And for a book of this nature, I wanted this book not only to look beautiful on the iPad and the Mac, and it does, but also wanted it to be real functional on the iPhone because it's about the iPhone. So, for instance, all the screencasts are shot in the iPhone portrait view. So you can actually watch a screencast on your iPhone. Um, uh, so iBooks has a really good function to allow you to swap between that kind of scrollable iPhone friendly view and then the basic, you know, the more fancy layout view that you'd get on an iPad. And iBooks author does a really good job of that. So I was always going to keep it in iBooks. Going forward, uh, the next book I'm working on, I can tell you right now, is going to be EPUB because it's not going to need that feature. And um, and I'm fine with that. I think actually in a lot of ways it's going to be better. Like one of the problems with the iBooks author books is iBooks isn't in every country. And I have customers that want to download it, but they don't have an iBooks store in their country. So I've made a PDF version where I give you all the videos, and it, but you get a static PDF for the actual text of the book. You can get that on my website too now. But the... Um, uh, but I would rather those customers have the full experience, you know, with the interactive book. And so going to EPUB, I'll be able to do that. So there, there are some advantages. Um, iBooks Author is is kind of hard to work with. It's a hard app to work with. It's uh, buggy and has problems. But the books it makes are beautiful and very powerful. Uh, EPUB isn't quite as powerful, but it's a lot easier to work with. And the tools it does have are going to be fine. I'm going to be able to work with that just fine. So you'll be building the next book in in pages and then exporting yeah. a ZPub? Yeah. Yeah. It's already well on its way. <laughs> any any hints or should or shouldn't I ask? Nah, just wait. Because I, I don't you know, I don't want to announce it and then take two years again. I, <laughs> I think this one will be more like two or three months. It's really coming along quickly and I'm really happy with it. Oh, good. Okay. Well then you'll be back again in, in relative short order to talk it, about it, that one. If you'll have me. Oh, you know why. <laughs> Come on now. You know why I've been. David, okay, so I, I did. I definitely wanted to cover you know kind of how the book was put together and all. Yeah. But let's shift back to the to the iPhone. Um, just everything. I think most of the examples you just mentioned there were the apps, but and and it's 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 tough. And I think an iPhone to separate the apps, whether they're Apple's apps or third party apps, from the device yeah. itself. Yeah. So is the, the the book is primarily app driven or category driven? Um, well, that's a little of both, you know, because it's meant to be an iPhone field guide. So it starts out with, you know, you know, which iPhone would you buy if you were buying one with the, my analysis and opinions as to, you know, what the optimal customers are for the different kinds of iPhones. Then it gets into a lot of the operating system stuff. I mean, I talk about things as broad as, you know, how to set up your apps in a way that makes sense to real detailed stuff about custom keyboards and just a lot of, you know, integrate, you know, drag and drop and all the kind of stuff in the, that's built in the operating system. I think you should kind of have a working knowledge of to get the most out of the, the iPhone. And that's the first probably third of the book. And then after that, there's just a whole bunch of chapters covering categories of apps. So it covers both really. 
Yeah, it, I, it doesn't surprise me, but it yeah. it, it does present a, a little bit of a different challenge than writing even a general guide to the Mac because the iOS, I mean the the Mac OS is kind of the Macintosh. Um, yeah. But the the iPhone feels a little different because of the so much. So many capabilities built in um, the the accelerometer and the camera yep. and and all those things that aren't built into a Mac or not in the same usable way, and so it's 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 very much a different device, a much more and personal it, device. Yeah, and it's constantly evolving. I mean, like the um, you know the augmented reality stuff is really at the beginning. I'm working on. There's going to be an update to this iPhone book in the future with an augmented reality chapter, and I'm just trying to figure out what I can share with people that is actually useful for them on it. And uh, I'm really curious to see what happens at WWDC this year. But the um, it's like it's constantly evolving. Where the app really, I'm sorry, where the Mac really hasn't evolved that much lately. I and I don't buy that that you know it's done. I feel like Apple could, if they put the effort into it, add a lot to the Mac. But you know, the, the iPhone, for whatever reason, is getting a lot of attention now. So I want to make sure we can keep up with that. There's another chapter, by the way, in there on on um, accessories. That was a lot of fun to write. You know, picking mm-hmm. you know what's the best battery in the cases and the various bits and bobs you want to buy for your iPhone. Any surprise accessories, David? Because it seems like I'm – every once in a while I'll come across something It's like, wow, that's strange to plug into yeah, an iPhone. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. I mean I've got like some goofy ones like the banana iPhone case. But you know the, the, the basics are, are covered. And then I also cover accessories in the chapter on taking pictures with your iPhone. There's kind of like a mini photography book inside of it. And there's a lot of really great photography accessories for your iPhone. If you want to get better lenses or tripod mounts and stuff, there's some really great stuff stuff out there at this point. And you cover all that? Yeah. Good. Yeah. No, not good. Come to think of it, you'll cost me money. So <laughs> that's, that's always the problem with these kind of books because you, yeah. yeah, they open your eyes to a wider world of of capabilities. And the biggest trick is just to, okay, pick something that you think is is interesting to you. Maybe spend the money on it if that's what it takes. But then integrate it into your workflow and into your life, and and don't yeah. just jump from one to to the next to the next to the next because none of them will ever will ever stick. Yeah, the trick with all this stuff is baby steps. You know, pick one app and get good at it before you go on to the second one. Well, on your website, you've done an interesting series that I was a part of too, and that's the home screens of, yeah. of folks. And, you know, and initially I thought, gee, this is going to last about a week and a half. And yet every time you put, put up a new one, I look at it and think, gee, I didn't think about that. Or it's really interesting to see the choices that people have made with their apps. And obviously, the ones that go on the home screen are the ones that are the most important to them. Yeah, no, it's great. I love it. And some people, I think you've been on a couple times uh, over the years. And you know, there's some people where because I've been doing it for so many years now that it's fun to see like how did Chuck do his home screen four years ago versus now, and um, it's constantly evolving. And it is one of the most popular series on MaxSparky.com because it is fascinating to see how other people manage their home screens. And sometimes you get ideas or find an app that you never heard of before. Yeah. And, and there are two facets to it. First of all is the management of the home screen. Something yeah. as simple as do you use folders or don't you use folders? What do you put in yeah. the dock? Yeah. And and yet, but to your point, you know, you also, gee, that's an app. What is that app? I don't know that app. Or why is David using this app for this as opposed to the app that I'm using for that same function? Yeah. You know, what what's the differentiator? And I mean, I've 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 changed or I've experimented with apps plenty of times just for that very reason because yeah. it's someone I know or respect, and say, gee, why you know what what do they know that I don't? Yeah, it, it is really fun. Honestly, I mean that's that's one of the the areas of delight of the iPhone. I think is app exploration. Um, it's easy to forget how hard it was to try apps out on your Mac years ago and you know the the hoops you had to jump through to buy it or get the shareware and then you always worried a little bit if you're going to a if you were on a reputable website or not when you're paying or even installing you know code on your computer you never were really sure and for and we're nerds right and for people who really aren't that nerdy it was almost impossible for them the idea that they would buy additional applications for their mac where the iphone one of the things apple got right from the beginning was they just made it really easy for anybody to go and try an app out and you know that apple has seen the fruit of that over many years now 
I think we all have. I, I think yeah. you're right because they, they made it by, by its very nature. I mean, no, I know, folks, they don't have the, uh, free trials. I get that. But yeah. they also if, – if you, if you take David's approach, just look at a category of apps. There are bound to be some free options in there. They may not be the best options, but at least you'll decide whether that category is for you. And then you can start searching and maybe David's book is the best option to go and find out the best in class. Yeah, I do. I do like to think of my chapters on app categories as kind of like an opinionated buyer's guide in a lot of ways. I mean, I did not put I like, for instance, when, just to go back to the calculator chapter, I downloaded like 30 calculators. I only wrote about four of them. You know, if there was something that didn't make the cut, I didn't put it in the book. I, I didn't want to waste people's time. I guess one of the th my goals of the book was for me to make all the mistakes and stumble my toe so the readers didn't have to. And I respect the fact that you you are right up front and saying it's an opinionated version instead of you know these are the best. Well, there yeah. you know it's it's impossible to keep up with. I mean, there may have been five calculator apps released as we did this interview. So yeah, but but these yeah. are among the best you could find, and these are what yeah. you like. So yeah, and I know they're I know they're solid that you'll be good if you use them. So yeah. yeah. Um, David, do you get into? I mean, I know you you talked about photography, and that's such an obvious thing with the iPhone. But do you get into any kind of games? On, on this? I even have a chapter on games, Chuck. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, because it's the iPhone field guide. I felt like you know people know me for a lot of my productivity stuff, but I like to play games too. You know, I grew up um, with you know the original arcade games. So um, what I did with games is I have some cha a chapter where I break down categories of games i didn't like go through and make it exhaustive there's a gazillion games in the app store but but you know i, I talked about things like um tower defense and endless runners and just kind of the genres of games that there are out there and i picked a few best in class for each genre so i made some game recommendations but better yet i feel like i kind of turned the reader onto the different genres so they could have a jumping off place to go explore more games if they wanted Interesting approach. Uh, very interesting yeah. because uh, whether you know it or not, we don't cover games on Mac Voice as much because I'm not a gamer. So yeah. I don't feel qualified to express much of any kind of an opinion about games. Yeah. So that's a really interesting way to look at it is, okay, if I, if I decide I need something to kill a little time, you send me down a, a, a genre of game as opposed to just what you think are the best. Yeah, I mean, like, for instance, someone like you, I think, like, I would, when I see you at WWC in a couple of weeks, I'm going to try and get you hooked on Alto's Odyssey. It's a great little game. You can play it while you're in line at the grocery store, and it's fun and relaxing, you know? It's not, you don't have to think of yourself as a fancy gamer, you know? It's just kind of a fun time waster. But then there's other games that are super involved and, you know, take a lot of time and and you know that's I, I see that's probably not the kind of game you'd be interested in but there's fun games out there for everybody okay so tell me about the one what what genre is the one you're recommending for me alto's odyssey is one of my game obsessions <laughs> i have to admit i uh, i have um i just looked at my nephew who does is not impressed with anything that i do you know he's a <laughs> teenager right <laughs> And uh, he came over to my house the other day, and Alto's Odyssey works on iOS and Apple TV. So they were watching a movie on my Apple TV, and they saw the game there. So he started playing, and he saw that I had unlocked all the characters. And all of a sudden, I finally impressed him. <laughs> 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 but also, it's a it's an endless runner, and by that it means you're a snowboarder. And uh, in this case, you're snowboarding in the desert, and the game starts. You just start going. You tap the screen to jump. If you hold the screen, you do a flip. And uh, even and then you just keep going until you crash. And when you crash, um, uh, it doesn't really upset you too much. You just start over again, and you can bounce on balloons and grind on lines and things. It's, it's just a very relaxing game for me. At okay. Least. All right, I'll do a little homework before I see you at WWDC and let you know how it's going. Yeah. Yeah, something to do on the airplane. Yeah, <laughs> I've got a stack of something this thick to do on the airplane, David. But that's, okay, that's another discussion. Now, do you work? Uh, do you read paper on the airplane, or do you like do digital on the airplane? Oh no, I do digital. Okay, I do. I do, I do. If for no other reason than just I don't want to carry the weight and yeah. the bulk of, of paper. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I I usually have a notepad just in case everything goes dead. The batteries are all dead and, you know, we have an EM, an EMP of some kind. I, I, at least I'll be able to take some notes. 
Yeah. Well, you know, if you read my book, I'd give you some good battery tips. You'd never get on an airplane with your battery dead. You'd be fine. Yeah, well, I don't believe me. That's that's like the last thing. You know, get to the get to the gate early and find a place to plug in to make sure you don't run out of juice. Oh, Chuck, you got to get a battery. Oh, Keep I've got batteries. Back. I've got oh, batteries. Okay. But but I mean, yeah. plug everything in, including the battery. Yeah, just, just to be safe. <laughs> just to be safe. I've I've spent too many hours on the tarmac in too many places, David. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's. I share my battery with my neighbors when I'm on airplanes. I bring an extra cord because. Uh, for some reason, most people just don't think about that for some reason. I guess they're stressed about the flight or whatever. So uh, quite often I've got free drinks because I shared my anchor battery. <laughs> just a little travel tip for you. You're a drink hustler. I love it. I didn't yeah. know that about you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's. we have to talk about the specifics of the book. Um, well, first of all, I, you know that many pages, that many screencasts, how much space does it take up on, on my iPhone or iPad? It's a two gigabyte book, Ooh. two gigabytes. Yeah, okay. it's a big book. It's a, uh, it is Apple. Well, it's one point nine something gigabytes. Apple's maximum that they will allow is two gigabytes, and I filled it to the brim, you know, with stuff. And the uh, it's four hundred and fifty pages, forty four chapters, sixty five thousand words, over fifty screencasts. I actually lost count of the screencasts. I think it's fifty four, but don't quote me on that. I'll have to go through and count them at some point. Um, but the uh, and then lots of picture galleries. It's a it's a very rich media book. So if you have iBooks on your iPad or your Mac or your iPhone, that's the the best way to consume it. Like I said, if you're in a country that doesn't have an iBook store, there's a PDF version that gives you the exact same content, except it's not all glued together for you the way it is with iBooks. So you can buy it at, well at maxsparky.com or do I have to go to the App Store? Uh, if you go to maxsparky.com slash iPhone, that gets you links to the PDF version, which is the only place you can get it is from maxsparky.com PDF. But the iBook store, you can search for me in the iBook store directly. Or if you just go to like I said maxsparky.com slash iPhone, there's a link there for the iBook store as well. Got it. And how much is this uh, this masterpiece? It's $20. Um, I'm probably going to be raising the price at some point. I'm doing kind of an introductory pricing thing because the, all the updates are going to take quite a bit of time. So I'm going to make this. This is not going to be a uh, – it's a lot of work, so I wanted to make the price reflective of that. Well, yeah. I mean, that over 50 screencasts alone just – folks, yeah. if, you, if you think that you just plug in, hit the button, and and then stop recording and when you're done – doesn't work that way. No, but I really enjoy doing it. And uh, I feel like the screencasts add a lot to the book because it really kind of gives you a hands-on on how to use the apps. Yeah, no, no question about it. I mean, it's it's always better to see somebody do something instead of being reading through 15 steps trying to do it. If you can just see it. Amen, you know, brother. 15, 15 yeah. seconds and you've covered all those steps and, and made it even clearer. So, yeah, perfect. David, um, MaxSparky.com, of course, is the website where all of this is. Where else can folks find you on uh, social media? Um, on Twitter, I'm at MaxSparky. And um, the podcasts are all over on Relay FM. Uh, one is uh, Relay FM um, slash Mac, uh, MPU for Mac Power Users. And the other one is Relay.fm slash Free Agents for my show on being an independent worker. And you do Mac Power Users with Katie Floyd and I do. Free Agents with Jason Snell. I do. So you just you just got all star talent everywhere, David. I'm not messing around, Chuck. I, no question. I don't come on your show until I got all my eggs in a row. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> I should have probably asked this at the beginning. How many field guides is this? This is the seventh, seventh. Uh, field guide. And then before that I wrote two books for Wiley Press, which were the traditional, you know, paper books you'd go into Barnes and Noble. So it's actually my ninth book, which is kind of nuts. Wow. And then there are multiple video field guides as well. The video field guides are not really books, ebooks. They're they're just videos. Like uh, I did one on Hazel or OmniFocus. That's way. If I just cover one app, I just do that as a video field guide because all you really need to do is see that one app. You don't need a bunch of uh, blundering words from me. Right, right. I don't know about blundering words, but they definitely yeah. serve their their purpose. No question. Yeah. Well, I will see you in just uh, a very short time at WWDC, but I also understand that you will be uh, in in the audience at MacStock this year. Yeah, I you know I thought I wasn't going to be able to go because of a scheduling conflict, and then the other thing, the dates ended up working out. So I uh, I'm looking forward to being a participant and just going and enjoying it. I don't have to put together any slides or anything. I'm just going to go and hang out and uh, see a bunch of friends. 
uh, I really miss the old days of Macworld. So I hope this is uh, what everybody's talking about, you know, you will gathering have, of the tribe. I promise you, you will have a great time. So I will see you in San Jose. Then I'll see you in Chicago. Looking forward to it. Me too, Chuck. Folks, check out David's book, uh, ebook, iBook. Yeah, every, whatever. Um, yeah, the, whatever. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the iPhone field guide. Um, you will definitely get more out of your iPhone with it. And if you are going to San Jose um, and WWDC, I'll be hanging out at AltConf. David will be hanging out wherever he's, he's hanging out. I'm not going to reveal that. And uh, definitely come to Max Talk and you can see us both. All until, right. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com. That was perfect, David. Notes. Thank you. And to connect with Chuck on social right. media. Get involved in our Mac Voices Facebook group and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash macvoices and join these folks who help keep Mac Voices coming to you. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.